what? We'll call the April 20th Williams County Board of County Commissioners meeting to order. Beth, will you call roll, please? Barry? Here. Corey? Here. Bo? Here. David? Here. We have a quorum. We will continue. Uh, let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, let's start with the consent agenda. Move to approve. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Beth, did you catch? Barry got the second on that one. Okay. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, Beth, roll call vote. Barry? Yes. Corey? Yes. Steve? Yes. Bo? Yes. And David? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Um, let's jump right down to uh, new business uh, number one, Finn Dooley. Uh, we'll go ahead and get you presenting right away so you guys can get on down the road. Thank you, thank you. Five minutes to tell you. Uh, that uh, we'll be back. Okay, just just state we'll your back. Uh, yep, if you don't mind stating your names for the record. Yes, Finn Tanduli, thank you. I uh, and and Donnie Nelson, uh, he's the uh, founder of the Salt Contaminated Land and Water Council. Yeah, um, my name is Donnie Nelson. I farm and ranch at Keene. Okay, thank you. So we are blessed by the resources endowed, entrusted to us, and. My my uh, first exposure to it w in the oil was uh, uh, excuse me, um, Freiburg, North Dakota. All my life, I've been involved in resource extraction, gold mining, iron mining, and my my look at it has been at Freiburg, and Wyoming, and Louisiana, and Nigeria, and Kazakhstan, and I'm here to die, working on being it, having it done right. And I've been fortunate enough to meet Donnie Nelson who has, uh, go ahead, tell them, tell them about, briefly about yourself and, and your experiences with the oil patch. <clears throat> well, my, I'm a third generation farmer and rancher. Um, we've had oil in our area for over six decades. Um, we, for many years, did not benefit with the minerals we have off this one, but I have many, many saltwater spills and contaminated places upon our land and the, my biggest concern when the Bakken came in is the scope of it compared to what we've had and <clears throat> how our state has neglected to clean up what we've had in the past. So I kind of I met Fintan and we kind of been talking and and we started this uh, foundation to try and get reclamation done right. Uh, the old digging hall method doesn't work. It's the most expensive. And what you're actually doing is you're taking contaminant, good soil that ended up being contaminated, you're taking it out, putting more good soil in, and contaminating it again. By We've, leachate. By leachate. Yeah, by leachate. We've put together uh, some pretty renowned scientists that can reclaim it. Maybe not fully, but we can do it, but it's expensive and it's long term. And that's, I guess, the gist of it. We're here today. We'd like to look, work with the county and get an, um, someone appointed that we can work with. Um, we've got, uh, it's not signed yet, but we're going to have an agreement with McKenzie County. I'll let him talk about that. We're, we've been in uh, discussions with the governor, and they said they can break loose some money for the counties if we meet with every, all 17 oil producing counties and then offer this to them, and we will ha set up meetings for the, the landowners to come in, and the oil industry will not be allowed to speak, just the landowners. And then we also have people that have said that 
they have large firms and large Wall Street uh, firms that they have money set aside to do this. And what I feel is the state should use some of the legacy funds for this. That money came from the land. At least a percentage of it should go back to the land to reclaim it back. And we have um, firms that will match the state if they commit. I'll let Finn Tan. The, uh, the good friend, the good friends in, in the state of North Dakota, uh, as Lynn Helms told me at church, she says, Finn, we need you to stay, keep speaking up because we get a lot of pressure and, and we should have some counter pressure. So the state's, the state's um, engagement is much more uh, faithful to the interests of the oil industry and throughout the world, you will see that the oil industry is ready to walk off when the whales are exhausted. What we're, we, we're showing no disrespect, no disrespect, but the method of the state for reclaiming is to go in and cut out the designated, uh, the, the designated site, remove the road, and leachate in wet conditions will come from the bottom and poison it. So let's end with this. We're going to have a proposal for all the counties. There is money. Steve Applebaum, one of our, one of our experts, and I've given you one of the maps that he's done using satellite technology, has contacts. The governor has heard this, and reclaiming requires finding them. We find them with satellites. We find them with, with truck-mounted devices. We find them with, with shoulder-mounted devices. We can measure it at depth. Every single one of these sites that's been reclaimed by the state with a small dig and haul will eventually fail if the wet conditions return. And we'll be back. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, the, immediately what comes to mind is we have a lot of um, uh, salty lakes. And, and uh, I mean, how do, you, how do you determine between a a salt spill or saltwater spill uh, versus a, a uh, saline lake? Yeah. Uh, the uh, oil field salt is sodium chloride. The surface salt is sodium sulfates. And the sophistication allowed with, with the satellites and signatures and a, a genius who doesn't speak English very well, but he's a brilliant fellow, Fugi Wang, they can actually tell the difference with the sophistication of our era. I, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't remediate both when they're in the same spot. Okay. And, and let me offer this as a parting comment. Each of you should assert yourself as trustees of the lands in this county. You know this land better than anybody in the state offices. And they have the constant pressure of the God-blessed industry. And I love the job. I love the industry. But uh, you should assert yourselves, and we should have the best reclamation possible. That's what the law requires. Every single one of your farmers deserves their own plan to fix this land using the best technology. Sayonara. Excellent. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, just one last thing, too. Uh, what we would like to do is get set up so that we um, can uh, have the counties actually go out and assess the spots themselves and go back and make sure the reclamation is done correctly. Because my opinion is the state has not been doing that job correctly. Thank you. Perfect, thank you very much, gentlemen. Okay. Um, let's, uh, let's jump into the bid openings. Dennis, sorry, uh, and then we'll drop back to the public hearing and get that out of the way. Okay, the first one we have is the County Road 6 Spring, Springbrook Dam area. We've got the landslide, the dip, and then the uh, bridge abutments. We had one bid, Knife River, $248,685.52. Okay, so I would assume your recommendation is the single bidder or uh, because it's significantly higher than the engineer's estimate. Do you have any comment on that? 
we've put it off a long time. Okay. Fair enough. I would move to go with Knife River mm -hmm. for County Road 6. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, Beth, roll call vote. Corey? Yes. Steve? Yes. Bo? Yes. David? Yes. And Barry? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. The next one we have is the countywide, the balance of the countywide pave, uh, striping, other than our federal aid stuff that we have next or whenever. Striping, West River striping, $241,815.20. Traffic Safety Service, 258478 Okay. Recommendation? West River. Okay. What are the wishes of the board? I make a motion to uh, approve the 2021 county pavement markings and award to West River striping for 241, 815, oh. and 20 cents. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, Beth, roll call vote. Steve? Yes. Bo? Yes. David? Yes. Barry? Yes. Corey. Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Do you want me to do the rest? Okay. And then um, we have the resolution for the uh, rumble strips, federal aid, um, some striping, some safety upgrades through the federal aid, surface preparation technology, 360,000. 871.22, which 10% would be ours. The resolution is here with Beth for signatures if approved. Kim? You, you said this one's federal aid? Yes. Traffic, it's our highway safety improvement. Okay, and 10% is what we have to... Correct. Okay. Just need a motion from the board, I would assume. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve and authorize the chairman to sign. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, Beth, roll call vote. Steve? <clears throat> yes. Bo? Yes. David? Yes. Barry? Yes. Corey? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Okay, the next resolution we have is for the grading and paving on County Road 7. Knife River Corporation was the low bid of $2,894,260.44. And that, again, is federal aid, 20% county and city. There's a short section of city where it ties in. That's including the city? Yes. Yeah, that's the total bid. I would move to award it to Knife River for County 7. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? A second. Any additional discussion? This one's a really exciting one because seven needs to be done with the school and the airport. So this is a this is awesome. Great news. Okay, uh, Beth, roll call vote. David. Yes. Barry. Yes. Corey. Yes. Steve. Yes. Bo. Yes. Okay, motion passes. Okay. Do I do the rest? Okay. Then uh, we have Northeast Truck Reliever Route. Um, we had the public input meetings. 
And some or all of you were there at one point or the other. Mornings or afternoons or on, on the video. So if we can put that map up and as talked about, um, like in 2017, the black route was forwarded on to the county as that was kind of the route that was the best um, that was sent forward to us at the time and kind of everybody was basically on board. We've had the public input meeting and there was quite a few different questions or things that maybe didn't, some of the areas weren't quite as happy as others. So they have asked us to take a look and get the county thoughts. I actually was on the call with Dennis um, when we talked with DOT, and, and I think the big thing, they, they need to finish their study. They've already um, put a huge amount of uh, resources into this. It doesn't really mean at this point that nobody has money to do it. The state hasn't allocated money. So DOT doesn't have the ability to do it, but we need to finish the study. So their question to us is, are we still in support of it? Um, the, the city was also on the call. Mayor Klug did say the city was in support of it. Um, the red dots on there are, are uh, artifact areas. <clears throat> so some of it, you know, the, the route is what the route is because there's only certain ways to get through all the artifacts. But they did say if they were to finish the study, that doesn't mean that we couldn't make some adjustments. If it turned out down the road, they could they they got the money and were able to build it. So, you know, I know some of the comments we heard were, this is too close to to here or there. But uh, they did kind of agree that we'd be able to make some adjustments if we needed to. But the big thing now is just to see if we are still in support of the project, finish the study, and then we wait. So in the study area is the whole map, correct? Right? Correct. Or, or is it the, the dotted line, I mean? It's uh, the, the, well, the, the yeah, you yeah. can see the black one running through there. Right, but the checkered yeah, line. All the way around there, yeah. yes. And yeah. and I see Mr. Wilt just walked in from DOT, so he may want to add something. I don't mean to put you as you walk through the door, Joel, but uh, I was just kind of explaining the conversation we had. You need to finish the study, or DOT needs to finish the study, and that's kind of the big thing here to make sure... Uh, we're still on board. Joel Wilt, North Dakota DOT. That's absolutely correct. We just need to finish the study. If there's, uh, we're, we're not to the design, once we get to the study and we're into the design phase, if there's any slight changes, for instance, um, the oil well pad that was put in on the alignment up there, um, it's a slight change for us, but we can do that without changing the whole study. If we go in and try to do something major, then we'd have to change the study later on. But, you know, we just have to finish the study at this point. Are there any questions for me that you have? You yeah, mentioned so oil pad. Did somebody, did they drill an oil, oil well right in the? Yep, it's that red square right there where the arrow is. It's right dead in the middle of it. Yep, but we've already um, we've already talked to Federal Highway, and they're okay with us moving it over slightly to miss the oil pad. Nick, isn't there or Mr. Wilt? Has there not been conversations with the Industrial Commission with this? There, there have been, um, and I don't know that anybody contacted your planning and zoning though, and told them too. So yeah, industrial commission is supposed to know that, but yeah, we we don't we, we don't have we don't anything, have to, anything do with to do. Industrial zoning. commission uh, spots these. We we have no say in it. Period. Right. So if an oil pad wants, to, if they want to drill one, you don't have a say where they can drill it. No, that's all. <coughs> the siting process is all done by the industrial commission. Okay. So it sounds like to me there's a huge lack of communications between the two state departments. There, there was in this case, um, they, they didn't call uh, the principal author of the document. She acknowledged that, that there was a miscommunication there. 
Um, I thought maybe it could double up if the county was doing uh, CUPs or something like that for those, but I guess not. So, so there's no secondary catch for those. This is one instance where you can't say it was the county's fault. Thank no, you. no, no, it wasn't. It was it was definitely our fault. I guess the other thing I'm confu confused on, and was it four years ago, Dennis? We gave him a uh, a ten year commitment to this, if I remember right. So. I guess nothing has changed in my mind, has it? And, and that was what I had said, uh, Commissioner Montgomery, but my only thing was I didn't want to be the one saying that for the entire commission. So the question was raised from from DOT, and, and I believe it was, I can't remember the guy's name, the number two guy, and he just asked if we could at least have a conversation about it and just just so we all know we're on the same page. Yep. It was my very first meeting as, as a county commissioner, so it would have been December of 2016. <laughs> and, you, and you remember everything you did that meeting? You, yeah, it was a shocking way to start a, uh, uh, being a county commissioner, so making they, everybody mad right out of the gate. Right. <laughs> so, so my question, the, the study area is inside that uh, checkered black line. And not, you know, not to muddy things up any, but... but if for some reason instead of the black one it turned into the green one or something, does that, does that, your your study is for which route? Or Our study is for other? all the routes that okay, are on there. That's, that's what was my. I guess I'm I'm okay with you know being committed to it as long as the state is committed to taking all of the concerns that were brought up in those meetings seriously. Because I I feel that we're doing folks a terrible disservice if just because we've spent all the money to study all this stuff that we have to commit to building the road whether people care or not. So I mean there was a lot of good points brought up in those meetings that need to be considered, and um, you know I I feel that it's unfortunate that they drilled an oil well right smack in the middle of that. But I felt it. I feel if if I would have built my house there. The state would say, "Tear the damn thing down." So to me, it's like tear down, tear down the damn oil well, because that's where we were planning to build our road. Because if it was a house, that's what would be said. But that's just my opinion. The only thing I would say is that our planning zoning has known that we have committed to this, any of these routes, and that there was to be no, it's specifically, I think, with the black route, right? That there could be no development on it? Right, okay. So that was, I mean, we, we would, a house would have never got built. No, I, mean, <laughs> I know, I, it's a for instance. Specifically, you right. know, just as a for instance, because if, you know. <laughs> And sometimes they build a little too close to the road. And <laughs> Any I other? guess I'd just like to thank Joel for coming yeah. and, and catching a few arrows. I appreciate that, Joel. <laughs> but uh, that was really all it was, guys. We don't, we don't need a motion. Just wanted, they were just wanting to make sure we were still on the same page that we were seven or eight years ago, whenever it was that it came up. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Dennis? Any updates? Just probably need to let them know what the thought process is of, of the board. And can you let them know that? Yeah, you're, everybody's still, county's still on board with moving forward. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When the study is done, though, I mean, it still has to come back for, you know. Come back and look at tweaks here and there. I'm sure they, yes. Uh, Commissioner Ramberg is on the biweekly meetings when they, when they move forward again. Soon, I don't know when they'll move forward, but yes. Okay. 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 Thanks. Thank you. Okay, Karen, we'll go back to the, uh, not that this is specifically you, but we'll go back to the public hearing. Standing, standing by and ready for oh, corrections. No. Oh, yeah. 
No, I, I just wanted to note that you know how to do this. It's just read the title of it and then open to the public. But I just want to note that on the agenda, uh, it should be the ordinance is number 2021-04-20. Oh, dash. Did I do it wrong on the agenda? Yeah. 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 Just, So you said read the title first, then open in the public hearing? Good. Okay, we're, this is a first reading of an ordinance of the Williams County Board of County Commissioners, Williams County, North Dakota, allowing the board to award grants to public and private behavioral health service providers from county reserve funds and other county funds not restricted by state law. Okay, we'll open the, uh, the public hearing, allowing anybody in the audience to step forward and make a comment. Okay, anybody that wants to make a comment on ordinance number 2021-04-20. Go ahead and step forward. Yeah, I, I think they would, you know. Okay, third and final call for any public comment on ordinance number 2021-04-20. Okay, we'll close that public hearing. Uh, we need no motion at this point. We wait to the next reading, and then it becomes an ordinance. It'll be published in the Herald, and then the second reading will be four and four, May 18th. The next board meeting on May 8th, not the next board meeting, but the board meeting on May 18th, so. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Karen. All righty. Um, we bounced around quite a bit here, but uh, Karen did open a new business. Okay, Darcy, I think you're up. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. We have for you two abatements to hear tonight, this morning. Um, Northwest Properties LLC has filed an abatement for tax years 2019 and 2020 on their property known as Plaza 26, which houses Tractor Supply, Quidoba, Papa John's, Harvest Dispensary, Smiling Moose, Glow Tanning, VIP Nails, Low Law, and Halliburton Laundry and Storage. This property is the old Walmart. For 2019, they are requesting a change from eleven million four hundred ninety-five thousand eight hundred to four million eight hundred thousand, and for 2020, the change they are requesting is eleven million seven hundred fifty-five thousand one hundred to four million eight hundred thousand. On March 5th, a partial inspection was completed of the public areas. No one was provided to show us around the closed off areas and the tenants were not notified of our inspection. We did discover a change needing to be made in the classification of the original structure. We would ask you to approve this change in the improvement value for 2019 from 10,487,800 to 9,737,500. No change to the land value is necessary. For 2020, the improvement change would be from 10,747,100 to 9,786,500. The applicant has provided no information regarding how they arrived at their requested value other than an unrecorded contract from 2018 for $6.3 million. Since that time, the front shop finish area has increased as new tenants built out. We request denial of the original abatement and amending to change the structure value for 2019 to 9,737,500 and for 2020 to 9,786,400. The city, uh, city Commission heard this abatement on March 23rd and uh, voted to deny the original abatement and amend it to our recommended numbers. Okay. Interesting that there's a dispensary in there and it's 420, just saying. Um, all things aside from that, <laughs> yeah, anyway. 
What are the wishes of the board? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to deny the request and move forward with the uh, recommended changes uh, from Darcy's office. Can we have a motion? Is there, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Beth, roll call vote. Barry? Yes. Corey? Yes. Steve? Yes. Bo? Yes. David? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Right. Thank you. Is there something we're missing in the uh, agenda for the rest of the folks in the audience? I want to make sure we don't miss anything. Good. Helen. I did email out a copy of this. Does anyone want a paper copy? Oh, Beth is giving a paper copy. No, not to these three. Okay. As long as we're all on the same page, gentlemen. All right, so you see we're requesting permission to fill one position. It's an equipment operator, truck driver. However, let me look at Dennis quick and say, you want one or two right now. Yeah, we have, we have tentative notice of retirement from two people. I actually just met with them on Friday. And so we're gonna, we're gonna up that number to two, please. We know that by the end of the summer, we will have two retirements. And so Dennis would like to start advertising and of course get those folks trained in before the others go. So okay. I'm updating the list to two. The number is two. What are the wishes of the board? Move to approve. Okay, we have the motion to approve the bo both positions. Uh, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Beth, uh, roll call vote. Corey? Yes. Steve? Yes. Bo? Yes. David? Yes. Barry? Yes. Okay, motion passes. And then just two FYIs on that list. The first is that uh, we have it, money in Dennis's budget to hire seasonal mowers. And, and he's proceeding with plans. Those are just folks that come on for a couple of months and, and help to mow the, the ditches is what we're doing. Of course, depending on moisture, we'll see how that all goes and how much he needs. But, but we'll add one, maybe two people, depending. The other thing is that the Northwest Narcotics Task Force has an opening. Someone resigned, and, and we have an evidence technician position that will open. That's not something that comes before this board for approval because the task force has a separate board that makes those approvals. But I just wanted you to know because if you saw it advertised in the paper, you might wonder where that comes from. But they are county employees. We do, we're really the fiscal agents for the task force, and so we handle some, some of those duties for them. If you flip over to the back side or scroll to page two, uh, we have a, a couple of library board positions that are advertised and we're collecting names of applicants and, and have notified those in the seats that they're eligible to reapply. We have a planning and zoning opening, a county planning and zoning opening that we will get a recommendation coming out of the planning and zoning board and we'll appoint that in May. And then we have three positions on the vector board. You'll see that they are seats held currently by Wayne Anderson, Brom Lutz, and Charles Chuck Wilder. We didn't have any additional applicants, and they all uh, stated their interest to refill those positions. And so you'll see the terms are listed on the sheet. Karen, those will be in the minutes. And we'd like permission, we'd like your approval to fill those three slots. Okay. Just the vector positions, Helen, not the library board? Correct. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to appoint the three positions to the uh, Wollaston Vector Control 
Wayne Anderson, Tom Luntz, and Charles Wilder with their terms list as listed. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Beth, roll call vote. Steve? Yes. Bo? Yes. David? Yes. Barry? Yes. Corey? Yes. Motion passes. All right. That's all I have. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Again, anything from the audience? Good. Um, I don't know if I beat your record, Corey, but this. <laughs> what time is it? Well. <laughs> Park board, Bim. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, and we will adjourn. <laughs>